Hello everyone. We will continue the topic persistence class. And in the previous videos, we covered what is persistence class. We created the persistence class to helper class automatically generated one with CA and another with CP. CA is called as actor class or agent class and CB is called as base class. If I will go to SC24 transaction code and I will go to actor class, this is our actor class which is generated. If I will display this class, if I will go to properties tab, you can see the base class is a super class of the agent class. It means all methods of base class are there in the agent class. Now what we will do? Now I will create a program. In that program, we will go for insert, update and delete database operation. And now we will achieve those database operation with the help of persistence class. In the ABAP programming playlist, we used the operation, we used the, we used the various operations like insert, update, delete, these all commands we used. Now we will go for same to same database operations with the help of classes, with the help of persistence class. So I will create a program. I will go to SC38 transaction code and I will give some name to the program. Suppose I will write Z database operations. With the help of classes or with the help of oops, I will write. Previously, you used insert, update, delete, modify commands. Now we will use persistence class. I will give the title to the program. Database operations. I will take the type as executable program. I will go for save and I will save it as a local object. I will just activate the program. Now we created the persistence class for our order header table. It means we will perform all database operation onto that order header table. So what I will do? I will go for SC11 transaction code. This is our order header table. Into this table, we will insert, delete, update with the help of persistence class. So firstly, I will take the input into this particular program. And we will just go in a way that at a time we will go for insertion of one order number, deletion of one order number, updation of one order number. So whenever we will go for single single, we will always go for parameters. So I will take parameters. Suppose first parameter is for order number P underscore O N O data element of order number type data element of order number. I will take second parameter P underscore O D type. I will pass the data element of order date. I will take third parameter. P underscore PM type data element of payment mode. I will go for fourth parameter P underscore total amount type data element of total amount. I will take fifth parameter P underscore currency type data element of currency. I will activate this program up to this level and I will go for selection text. 
I will go for go to text elements selection text. I will choose DDIC reference so that it will take the descriptions from the data elements. I'm activating. So these all descriptions are from the data elements itself. And out of all these, I will take order number as mandatory. You all know whenever you want to make some parameter or select option mandatory, you are using obligatory. Because if we will insert order number is compulsory, if we will update order number is compulsory, if we will delete order number is compulsory, so I make it as obligate. I will run this program and you can see we have five parameters and order number is obligate. Now I will take three radio buttons. One for insert, one for update, and one for delete. I will take three radio buttons. You all know how to go for radio buttons. Suppose my name of the first radio button is P underscore R1. Type C, radio button group R. So all three radio buttons will belong to one radio button group only. So I will just do control D, control D to duplicate a line. So these all three radio buttons belongs to one radio button group that is R1. It is just like our question paper. One question has three options. So all these three options are for one question. Same thing. This group, one group has these three questions. And we all know at a time only one radio button is ticked. So we have three radio buttons. I will pass the selection text to these radio buttons. Go to text elements. I'll go for selection text. Suppose first radio button, insert. Second radio button, update. And third radio button, delete. I will activate. I will go to back button. And if I will show you up to this level. So we have five parameters, total eight parameters. Five are input fields and three are radio buttons. By default, first radio button is ticked. If you want to go for other radio buttons, you can pass. Suppose if I want to go for last radio button as by default ticked, or if I want to go for second radio button as by default tick. Suppose if I will go for second. So I have to simply, simply put default. I will simply go default X. X means true. And you will be able to see second radio button as ticked. Second radio button as ticked. Similarly, if you want to go for third as by default tick, you can pass the default value as X. So our input is ready. Now with the help of persistence class, we need to go for insert operation. We need to go for update operation. We need to go for delete operation. Now you all know, whenever we will go for classes, whenever we will go for classes, Firstly, I will declare the objects which will refer to those classes. We have three classes. One with CL, which we created. One with CB, which SAP generated. One with CA, which SAP generated. And for CA, CB is the super class if I will go to CA. For CA, CB is the super class it means in CA, all methods of CB are there. For the database operation, which we are going for insert, update, and delete, everything is in CA class. So I will take two objects, one for CL, one for CA. 
because everything of C B is already in C A class. So I will declare two objects data. Suppose my object of C L class is LO underscore object type ref2. I will give the name to the class. I will just replace A with L. This is our CL class object. Now I will go for agent class. Or as you can say actor class. LO underscore agent type ref2 ZCA underscore order underscore act. There is no need to go for the object of base class because already the methods of base class are in the agent class, which we require for database operation. So what is the summary of this video up to this level? In this video, what we did now, we have now we created a program in with the help of that program, we will go for the database operation. So we created the inputs. Yes, we created total eight parameters. Five are inputs, three are radio buttons. And we make the order number as mandatory by using the keyword obligatory. And I declared two objects, one for the CL and one for the CA. There is no need to go for CB because already all the methods of CB are in CA itself. In the next video, we will firstly start with insert operation. Then we will go for update and delete. Yes, we will see how we can go for insert through these classes, then update and then delete. So that's it in this particular video. Thank you.